So if you've never had chicken and waffles, or you've never made it, well then buddy, you came to the right place. Okay, so today we're making chicken and waffles. This is the holy grail of Southern cuisine. Well, maybe not the holy, holy grail. I'm sure that there's a lot of opinions about that, but the point is that this is an iconic choice. If you've never heard of it, it might sound a little weird. Trust me, this is one of those things where when you put it together, and it just creates something special. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's beautifully fried chicken cradled atop a voluptuous, chewy, fluffy waffle, and then drenched in syrup. But in this case, we'll be making a honey butter. So with all that said, let's make make this, shall we? Okay, let's break this down into a couple different easy pieces. The chicky, waffles, and your choice of drizzle. Also, a surprise sandwich at the end, but shh, hush your lips, baby girl. We'll get into that later. Now let's start with the chicken. The traditional choice would be to use a whole chicken that's been cut into eight pieces. Your butcher can do this or you can do it yourself like I usually prefer because obviously we have to flex here. You first open up the legs by cutting the skin that attaches to the body, then remove the whole leg quarter on both sides, then work around the wing to remove it where the joint connects to the body, repeat on the other, then carefully split the breasts in half by cutting straight through the breastbone to leave two bone-in skin-on chicken breasts. I really recommend using a beater knife there, don't just use your favorite Japanese blade. All right. And lastly, separate the drumstick from the thigh, cutting through the joint in between. And now you have a segmented little man. Now for your marinade, get a large bowl and add one and a half cups of buttermilk, one tablespoon of smoked paprika, one tablespoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of cayenne, two teaspoons of ground white pepper, and one tablespoon of kosher salt. Whisk that together till thoroughly combined, then add your chicken pieces to enjoy a nice milky bath for at least one hour and up to 24 hours. Now while that's marinating, let's do our waffles. In a medium sized bowl, add one and a half cups of whole milk at 95 Fahrenheit, mix in one and a half teaspoons of instant yeast, then set that to the side, and in a large bowl, crack two whole eggs and one egg yolk. And by the way, yes, there are more ingredients in here. I doubled the recipe for this video, and I'm not exactly sure why, so let's just pretend uh, that we're listening to what I'm saying, and the visual is, yeah. Anyway, whisk all that together until homogenous, then whisk in your yeasty milk mixture until thoroughly combined, and finally whisk in one third of a cup of gently melted unsalted butter. Make sure it's not piping hot. We want it just melted. If it's too hot, it'll kill the yeast, and you get no waffles and papa no hot. Now, in a large bowl, add two cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of granulated sugar, and one teaspoon of kosher salt. Whisk that together till thoroughly combined, then simply whisk the wet into the dry, and keep on mixing until nice and smooth, and that is your waffle batter. Now, wrap that up in plastic wrap and let it rest and rise for one hour before using. You can also rise them overnight in the fridge for 24 hours. Now, the waffles cook quickly, so let's fry our chicken next, unless you want cold-ass waffles. For the dredge, get a medium bowl and add two cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of cayenne powder, two teaspoons of ground ginger powder, one one tablespoon of smoked paprika, two teaspoons of ground white pepper, one tablespoon of garlic powder, and one tablespoon of kosher salt. Whisk that together till thoroughly combined, and that is your flour dredge. Now to fry your chicken, you'll need at least two and a half inches of vegetable oil in a large heavy bottom pot. Heat that bad boy to 350 Fahrenheit, then while that's heating, set your dredge station up. You've got your chicken, you've got your flour, and obviously you have your fry oil. Before you even toss your chicken in the flour, take about three tablespoons of your butt milk mixture and drizzle it into your flour and toss vigorously to create some randomized little balls of flour in there. Now from there, Remove your chicken, toss in the flour, while also pressing the flour aggressively into every little crevice to make sure it's coated evenly and nicely. Now shake off the excess, place your chicken on a baking sheet, and repeat with the rest of your chicken until everything is beautifully breaded. Then just tenderly and carefully lay your chicken into the oil away from you and fry three to four pieces at a time for 12 to 15 minutes until the chicken registers 165 Fahrenheit and the outside is a beautiful golden brown. Then remove your crispy gentleman using tongs and drain them on a wire rack set over a baking sheet. Then simply repeat repeat with the rest. I mean, look at this chicken. The first piece that emerged from the oil, my immediate thought was, oh Lord, have mercy, I'm about to bust. Okay, now we can start cooking our waffles. By now, the batter should have risen quite a bit, which is a good thing. All that rice will give it a nice little yeasty flavor. The, uh, good kind. Heat a Belgian waffle maker to the manufacturer's directions, spray it lightly with cooking spray, and add about three quarters of a cup or one cup of batter to the center. Close it gently, giving it a little press, then let it cook for the recommended time. Once it's done, open it up and voila, a little baby. Now, pop that baby out of there and repeat with the rest of your batter to go to the waffle district of flavor. 
Okay, we have our waffles and our chicken, but I also think we need one more thing, honey butter. In a small pan, add a quarter cup of wildflower honey or any light honey of your choice. Heat that over medium heat until warm and starting to get a little runny. Then whisk in two tablespoons of cold salted butter. Yes, salted. Then turn off the heat and continue whisking constantly until emulsified beautifully. And it looks like this. That is a salty honey butter. Now we're ready for the moment of truth. First thing, waffle down on the plate. Next, a beautiful selection of the crunchiest chicken, followed by an absolute drenching of your honey butter. I mean, really, don't be shy here. And optionally, but also recommended, a nice drizzle of maple syrup. Even better if it's smoked maple syrup for a nice campfire type beat. Now that looks like a party for just about anyone's mouth, but let's see if it's as good as it looks. Da -da 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 -da. So we have our chicon. This has actually been sitting with syrup and honey butter on it. We did both the honey butter and the syrup on this. Obviously you can go one or the other. Choose your own adventure, right? Make decisions for yourself. This has been sitting with all that. Ooh. This has been sitting with all that on it and I'm curious to see if it still has crunch. I'm not sure. It may not. Let's find out. I'm gonna say it still has crunch. This is immaculate. This is the kind of thing that when you eat it, you're sweating and you feel ill, but you don't stop because it's so yummy. Okay, so pretty much the, the way that you would eat something like this, if nobody's ever had this before, you get a little bit of waffle, you know, some of the syrup, and this is how I like to eat it, okay? Everybody eats it different. Little piece of chicken that goes on the waffle. You have a bite of everything. Bone apple, bone, b um, bone apple teeth. It's all the textures you want. Let me finish eating this. It's got all the textures you want. It's crunchy, it's salty, it's sweet, it's rich. It's, there's no cut to the richness at all. The sweetness is the only thing that brings you home. And to be honest, I'm not mad about it. This, this is a proper chicken and waffle, but can't we make something a little bit different? Maybe a little bit of garlic. <laughs> We're making garlic bread waffle chicken sandwiches. If you're not watching in the next thing, then get the hell out of here. We have one wild card for you here. A garlic waffle fried chicken sandwich. Now, the chicken and waffle batter is the exact same recipe as before. You marinate, bread, and fry your chicken, except this time, you're just gonna use two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and those will fry in more like eight to 10 minutes instead of 12 to 15. Now, once those are fried for the waffles, you'll make the batter as normal, but this time, you want to ideally cook them in a smaller waffle iron that's about the size of a bun, or like a slice of bread. See where I'm going here? Oh, look how cute it is, little baby infant pants man waffle iron. Now, this little guy took about a quarter cup of batter, and I didn't have any way to control the temp, so I just closed the lid, prayed that it would work, and made some garlic butter by combining a third cup of salted butter in a small pot, heated that over medium heat until completely melted, then removed it from the heat, and added four cloves of finely minced garlic, stirred that together, let it cool just slightly, and then stirred in two tablespoons of very finely chopped parsley. Once my waffle was done, I pulled it out, gave it a generous brushing of my garlic butter on both sides, always both sides, then just rinsed and repeated with the rest of my baby waffles. Obviously, you'll need like two waffles per sandwich, it's just account for that. Now finally, to assemble your sandwich, get one garlic waffle, place your fried chicken atop, then top your fried chicken with a nice dollop of spicy honey mustard, which by the way, I made my own by combining half a cup of whole grain spicy mustard, one teaspoon of cayenne powder, one teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of honey. Whisk that all together, and well, that's what went on there. Anyway, back to the chicken. So the spoonful of honey mustard goes right on top, then grab your other garlic waffle, and carefully crown your king for a very beautiful time. Now obviously, you could add some Swiss cheese and maybe some bacon to this, but I have a feeling we're gonna have have a beauty and simplicity moment here. Yay, sandwich time, sandwich time, yay. I don't even know if this is still crispy anymore. We might have did something here. I didn't think this was gonna be that good. Basically what you get here is you lose a little bit of the crisp, but you, in return, you get this like buttery rich garlicky chew in the waffle. Obviously the rich crispy chicken, it's a little spicy and sweet from the honey mustard, which we added a I don't want to eat anymore, I'm not <laughs> What more do you want me to say? This isn't terribly different from the chicken waffle concept, but we're just raising the bar. We're making it savory and we're making it a sandwich, which if you already made the batter and you got it sitting around, you should 100% make this sandwich or make the chicken waffles. Or make both. You decide what you want or don't make it at all. I feel like a lot of you are lurkers. Point is, chicken and waffles, perfectly done, as you saw. I would recommend not eating these for breakfast unless you want to go to sleep immediately afterwards. You want to know what else has a nice set of thighs glazed and dripping? B-roll. All right guys, and that is it. So we made our chicken and waffles. The chicken was creepy. The waffles were 
And that honey butter was just absolutely I did a lot of singing on this channel recently and not mad about it. What do you guys think, huh? Can I, can I get a rating? Can I get a, uh, that? Oh, wow, that's pretty good. I don't know what, what the editors are gonna put something in there. Uh, is the sun f done? The sun cannot figure out where it wants to be today. I love Texas, ha ha ha! The point is, you should definitely make it if you never have before, regardless of if you've had it or not. I'm telling you, this is life changing. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Oh, I gotta close this.